Alright, welcome to this uh, overview and tactic for the Necrons. Uh, it's a force that I really enjoy collecting. Very straightforward to put together. Uh, nice colour scheme and uh, sort of a very outstanding kind of race. Very, very strong theme to the Necrons. Um, so I've enjoyed collecting them. And the force that I'm going to show you here is one that's been refined over time. I've tried different Necron units and combinations. Um, but I think I'm onto a good one here. This force has performed very well uh, in games that we've played on the channel. So in this video we're just going to break the army down. Uh, we're going to run through the units, why I chose them, um, the tactica for each of these units, how they can work together in games, and then we'll have a look at the whole army and uh, get an overview of the whole thing and the philosophy behind it, how it's going to play out in games. And the, the philosophy's worked, the, this army's performed well, as I've said. So stay tuned for that. Just the inspiration for them. Uh, out of all the colour schemes that uh, that you can do, there's some really nice ones uh, in the current codex for Necrons. Uh, but I just went for the sort of the classic uh, Necron style, just that uh, rusty kind of silver effect um, with the glowing green on the plastic. There, I think works really nice, and just weathering it, making it look old. An ancient looking and uh, the overall effect on the when the entire army is together is quite striking I think and there's a very very strong theme behind the Necrons and uh, enjoyable to play within games as well. Uh, if you like what you see here as far as the colour scheme is concerned then there is a full painting tutorial on my channel. Uh, I'll show you how to paint one of the Necron Wraiths so from start to finish uh, I'll show you exactly how uh, to get all of those effects take you from the very beginning all the way through to the finished uh, miniature and then this technique you can take that and then apply it uh, to all the other Necron units and vehicles. That same colour scheme you can apply to any of the, the other vehicles. Check that one out on the channel. So for collecting Necrons best advice I can give is the same for other armies. You just start with the Codex. Um, once you've made up your mind you really really want to collect them. Uh, you just start with the Codex and then just read it through and there's, I'm sure there'll be units that you really, really like the look of. Uh, I would say go for those first. Units that you really, really like. Get a few of those, paint them up, and then uh, just build up your force from there. I wouldn't launch into a whole big collection to start off with, but just build up your force and tr use tried and tested units. Um, and then once you have those first couple of units, you'll soon discover a style of play that you have, the way that you like to play your games, and then you can add other units to that force um, to complement uh, the way that you play. Right, so the Necron race strengths and weaknesses, and then that's going to affect how you actually play the game. So I would say uh, they are some armies play at the back of the table, Imperial Guard and Tau, for example. Predominantly, they'll play at the back of the table and fire ahead. Then you have other armies that enjoy getting into the opponent's deployment zone, Eldar, uh, Tyranids. They're ones that get up up close and personal. Dark Elder as well, um, generally speaking. Necrons, I would say, are a, a medium distance. I wouldn't keep them at the back. Um, I wouldn't rush them right ahead. They sort of play in the middle ground. A lot of their weapons, especially in this force here, are medium range, 24 inches. And the units, are, a lot of them are good in combat, uh, but not as good as other races. So it's kind of a medium uh, part of the battlefield that you're going to be playing in. Um, the units that I have kind of reflect that. Some I keep further back, some get further forwards. Um, but it's that kind of medium distance that you aim for. Uh, armor on the Necrons is very good. Speed is generally good for this force. And uh, close combat, generally good. Not the best, but still very good. Um, so a lot of strengths to the Necron force. Uh, maybe low initiative is a weakness, but it hasn't really uh, affected being games and you can compensate for that just with a few little tricks here. Um, another thing that I've found is uh, a lot of the Necron units are good enough as they are without any upgrades and I've done that so that I've saved lots of points and I've been able to put spare points into things that I need and then it's also kept the army quite big, it's actually quite a large force for 1850 points. So we'll run through here and we'll build up this force and you'll see why I've chosen each unit and uh, each unit has a role to play 
in the game. So we'll start with HQ. What I'm going to do is just go to the back of the codex here. Uh, the characters for Necrons are quite good, uh, but I wanted to bulk out the main force, so I didn't go for any of the characters, not quite what I wanted, and uh, I think one of the best units is just the standard Necron Overlord. So, the first one I went for, and this will do the Army Commander first, and that's this guy here. One Necron Overlord, now this is the old, the old Overlord figure. Um, the lead one, but uh, for the way he's equipped, he fits perfectly for the Necron Overlord for me. So that's that's the figure that I'm going to use. So uh, the way the army worked out, I had a lot of spare points. I've been able to plow a lot of points into this guy, make him really good, and it's paid off in games. This has been a tough HQ choice, and uh, it's salvaged games for me, and it's been a real um, focal point of the game. So Tactica for him is. Uh, for close combat, I wanted something in the force uh, that is tough and hard to kill, so that I have an option in a game. The opponent's got a very, very tough uh, unit, you know, his best unit, his best HQ, and I felt I needed something in the force, at least that I could throw in and would stand some kind of chance. Um, and the best thing I saw for that was the Necron Overlord with a whole load of upgrades added on top. Um, and he's actually turned out to be very tough. And uh, that's helped out. I think you need that in any army that you collect for 40, well over 40,000. You need a super tough HQ unit or whatever of some kind. Something that you can stand up to anything that your opponent's going to throw at you. It may just be one unit that you have. Um, in this case, it's the Necron Overlord uh, with all the upgrades. So the base cost was 90 points. And that gives you good stats there. Strength and toughness 5 is very good. Weapon skill 4 is good and then free attacks isn't bad, and then he comes with a free plus save as standard. Um, he's got those three wounds, and if he gets knocked down, then on a five up, uh, he'll get back up again. That's pretty good, um, but we'll f add a few other um, upgrades to that to enhance that. Uh, so the way this guy is going to be used in the games, uh, I've taken Fayer on, so that the unit that he's with can fire rapid fire weapons and then still charge. Big advantage for the way that I've built this force. Uh, you can just see in the background there Necron Warriors that uh, he joins, um, and he'll grant them that that fire on. They'll be able to get out of the transport, fire all their weapons at full effect, and then still be able to charge as well. Big advantage that one. And then uh, I took the Staff of Light and instead changed it for War Scythe. Very very good uh, close combat weapon, and it's only ten points. So the War Scythe was a a good choice. And then of all these options here, and you're allowed to take a whole load of these. You may take any of the following. So I really went for it on this guy. Uh, just coming down to the bottom, I took Phase Shifter. So he has a 3 plus invun save in close combat, which is absolutely brilliant. And then I took Resurrection Orb. So instead of a 5 plus for those around him to get up, it becomes a 4 plus. And also that affects himself. If he gets knocked down, uh, then he can get up on a 4 plus as well with the resurrection orb and it's worth doing that for the amount of points that you've actually spent on him. And then uh, Semper Internal Weave, that just upgrades his save to a 2 up save so that means that now he's uh, any units of power weapons are going to really struggle against him. Uh, Mind Shackle Scarabs is a good one, he hasn't got this um, but it is a good upgrade to take, didn't quite have the points for it. And then Phylactery, when he dies and then he gets up again uh, you can then roll a d3 and that's how many wounds that he gets. So in games before he's been killed and the opponent's really happy and then I've managed to get him back up and then return him to three wounds again and you're going to see the opponent's face when that happens. The opponent realises he has to start all over again trying to kill your warlord. So excellent choice, very happy with him in games and the upgrades uh, makes a, a mediocre, mediocre unit suddenly into something that's very very good indeed. So that's where I've ploughed the points as far as upgrades are concerned um, into the Necron Lord. And then it works so well, the Necron Lord and Warsive took a second HQ, an Overlord again, uh, 90 points, and then just 10 points for the Warsive as well. So I've actually got two Overlords operating. And then for this guy, I've actually taken 
uh, a transport for in the Catskin Command Barge, which runs by the new chariot rules in Warhammer 40,000, which the rules are quite cool. Um, and then what I've done here, just quite uniquely, is I put magnetized the base, just tiny little 0.5 millimeter by 4 millimeter uh, magnets there and there, and then just on the bottom of his feet, so you hardly notice that he's got them. And then I just slip him inside there and there's a couple of magnets on the barge and he just sits there nicely and then I can pack him away. So I can use him as a as a, an overlord on foot in games if I want to. So that's the overlord in the Kadakun command barge, he's like the second in command. And then that's just to add a bit of speed to the force. Uh, didn't want a slow Necron army, wanted, it's important in games you've got some speed. Um, so he fulfills that role, he's able to fly about all over the place and uh, get into combat with vehicles with that war scythe and uh, infantry as well. And then the overlord is just your tough guy that can take on uh, anyone that comes close. Right, so the next uh, part of the force will be troops. And uh, Necron Immortals are okay, uh, but I wanted a larger force, so I've gone for warriors. Um, and these play an important role in the game. Um, so that just to start off with, a unit of nine Necron Warriors. I do like the Necron Warrior figures, and I like to see hordes of them. Um, so I've got a unit of nine. And uh, they're only 13 points each. So I've taken the Warriors here, nine of them, and that's just that for Ghost Dark, uh, it can carry ten models. So you've got the nine guys, and then they can be joined by the Overlord, and then I've taken uh, the Ghost, or Ghost Dark as uh, dedicated transport. Very nice model, absolute nightmare to construct and paint, uh, but it's come out very well indeed, very happy with it. Uh, Ghost Dark is a, I've, what I think is a brilliant model, um, as far as the way it looks, and also in the game as well. Uh, four hull points for starters, which is incredible for a transport vehicle. Uh, it's open topped, so the guys inside uh, can fire. And then uh, you've also got these Gauze Flare Arrays at the side here as well. Uh, it says five shots here at 24, and then another 10 or 10 shots at 12, which is excellent firepower. It's well armoured, and you've got that quantum shielding, so you're on front side and rear of 11, but with the shielding, it's 13. So, well protected. Nice rules for the shielding. I really, uh, think that's a clever idea, and makes the Necrons, makes the Necrons unique as far as vehicles are concerned. So, 115 points is an upgrade to add on to that. So, good price for... Uh, transport. I just use this in the game, I hang it, at the, hold it at the back, sometimes these guys they get out and they hang around, they stick close to it because this can repair Necrons that fall down, D3 Necrons a turn. Um, and I've done that before, if you've held a position, hidden the Ghost Ark at the back, opponents killing the warriors and then the Ghost Ark's replenishing, replenishing them each turn. Uh, so nice upgrade there. Open topped as well so the unit can get out they can fire at full effect because of his fire on and then charge into close combat. So nice combination there, um, nice focal point to the force and uh, it's been effective for me. And points wise for the troops and transport, not too bad at all. Then other troops choices for the Necrons is uh, six Necron Warriors and then another unit of six Necron Warriors. And then each of those is transported in the in a night side. So one and two. That's the air power for the force. And it's air power and they carry transports at the same time. So I could fly around, take out targets, drop off the troops whenever it's convenient. So the troops are protected. I could have ten Necrons holding objectives, so when they get fired at, they get assaulted in combat. But instead I keep the units smaller and carry them around in the transport vehicle and then just deploy them. Uh, when the coast is clear and in the meantime uh, you have here perhaps one of the most effective units in 40k as far as points are concerned uh, 100 points and you're getting yourself a superb flyer uh, 11 armor all the way around uh, so it's quite well armored for a flyer and then uh, living metal as well and then the weapon on here absolutely superb 
So they're armed with a uh, Tesla Destructor, 24 inch range, but that's not, that's not really a problem for flyers because you can fly right up to your target. Uh, four shots, but you're twin linked here at Ballistic Skill 4, so you're going to get your hits there. Um, and then for every six that you roll, uh, you'll get an extra two automatic hits. And it happens half the time when I fire these weapons, if not more. You get one six and suddenly you've got six hits at strength seven. Um, and if you're using these to ambush vehicles, um, transport vehicles, the side of heavy vehicles and so on, um, then they are a terror from the skies. Excellent against other flyers as well. So you really can dominate the battlefield. Uh, and other Necron players, they take a whole load of these. You know, sometimes you'll be up against five of these things flying around. Um, and they look very nice on the table. Very nice design for a flyer. Uh, very intimidating and only 100 points, which is an absolute bargain. So other armies that I have struggle with air power, um, but here for the Necrons, quite confident. Two of these I've found generally, uh, they do pretty well. I'm happy with the way that they perform. And you've got that troop option as well, uh, which works out pretty good in the games as well. So two flyers um, as dedicated transports. Very happy with them. And unit six warriors isn't bad um, against small units, you know, against units of Imperial Guard or other small units. They still perform pretty well. So that's all the troops done for the force. Right, then for elites, um, you might struggle to believe this, but I've actually got none. No elites in the force. The options are death marks, people take them, but not really into snipers. Lich Guard, I've tried them out, very expensive, and they don't perform very well. Uh, they don't, just don't have a transport vehicle where they can get out an assault from. You can't put them in the ghost dark. Um, and in games, they just I've got a unit of them, but they just wander around, get shot up. Um, so I've dropped those. Uh, Triarch Praetorians, haven't tried them. Katana Shards, quite good, but haven't got one of those. Flayed ones. And I have a Triarch Stalker as well, and um, tried that, but again, it just wandered around and then got shot up, so I dropped that. So elites for this force, none. Um, so my attention was turned to fast attack. Again, wanted to make a mobile Necron force. So uh, Canoptic Wraiths, 35 points, um, went for a unit of those. Uh, they, the stat line is excellent. Weapon skill, 4. Strength, 6. Toughness for two wounds, three attacks, and a free up save for 30 points. I think it's really good value. And then to add on top of that, they have an inbuilt phase shifter. That's a three plus invun save in combat, as standard. Uh, there are other upgrades for them. They can shoot. You can have whip cards, transdimensional beamers. But I found for these just to keep the cost down, uh, no upgrades at all, and. Uh, Effectively, to use them effectively in games, I found you have to take a unit of six. Uh, it's quite a common thing. If you're playing 40k and you play against Necrons, uh, you can expect to see a unit of these. So, six of the Wraiths, and again, this is kind of a unit that uh, another unit in the force that I have here that I'm happy to charge into virtually anything. Um, you're, because of that invun save, they can take on the toughest of monstrous creatures um, or uh, hordes of infantry at the same time. Well, strength six, uh, then uh, you can attack your vehicles as well. And it's a unit that you can put anywhere on the table. They have fearless, um, so uh, they're just going to keep. You have to wipe them out. Uh, there's no other option. They're not going to run from the table. Then a couple of other bits for them. Uh, they're jump infantry, so they're fast moving, which is again what I wanted in the force. Um, they're never slowed by difficult terrain, automatically pass dangerous terrain checks. So you move them through anything with no restriction, incredible. And then uh, the attacks that they have at strength 6 are also rending as well. So an incredible unit for the Necrons. If you're going to collect Necrons and you want to do well in games, I'd say that you have to take a unit of 6 of these. Um, and if not, take another unit of 6 as well. Nightmare for the opponent to deal with. The only way uh, is just to blow them away with overwhelming firepower before they have a chance to really break into your force. So Necron Wraiths are in. So that was one slot taken up uh, for fast attack. And then I really wanted Scarabs in the force. And so Scarabs, they're 15 points of base. So I took a unit, two units of three. 
here onto three. I'll just run through the stats for them as to why I took them. Uh, they're three wounds each, four attacks each. Absolutely superb. So they're a nightmare. There's actually, we add it all up, there's actually 12 wounds in that small unit. And then these things are the bane of vehicles. You charge them in, and then for each hit, a vehicle suffers from a weapon or model with a special or a D6. So you roll to hit, and you take all those dice that are hits, and you roll all of them, and on a 4 plus, for every 4 plus that you get, that vehicle loses one point of armor value. And if you reduce any of the facings, say rear armor's 10, and you get 10 of these hits in total, then the vehicle becomes a wreck and it is destroyed. So, uh, even if they don't kill a vehicle and they start knocking armor values down, it's land raider, you've got, you knock four points off, then it becomes front armor 10. Um, and then your other units are able to fire low strength weapons at it and still manage to take it out. So, these are very good. They're very fast. Uh, they're beasts, they count as so you're moving out 12, you move through cover very effectively, um, and then you've got your charge range on top of that as well. So, and they're fearless, so again, to get rid of them, the opponent has to just blow them away, uh, there's no other choice there. So, two units are free, and that is small, so tactically in the game, I'll keep these uh, out of trouble, and just hide them to start off with. And then here it comes, the little upgrade that I do. In heavy support, I take Canoptic Spiders. Uh, they're 50 points each. And I found that I don't give them any upgrades. I used to give them the upgrade for repairing vehicles, but it was quite rare they would have an opportunity to use that. So I saved the points and just kept them 50 points each. Take a unit of three. So you've now got a, a unit of three monstrous creatures in your force. So again, a, a good. A, a good unit for holding at the back, holding objectives, any tough unit that comes your way, any vehicle that comes through, uh, you can charge these in and generally they'll do pretty well. Uh, again, they're fearless, so the opponent's got to blow them away to get rid of them. Uh, strength and toughness, six and three wounds, uh, pretty good, and then a free up save and two attacks. So, but unit three of them. But the, probably one of the main reasons I've taken them is their ability each turn to breed and to generate new bases of spiders. So I spent a lot of time on eBay looking out for extra bases and invested in a whole load of them so there's, I have the ability to add plenty of these during the game. So each one rolls a dice and each one can generate uh, one base a turn. So here's turn one, you just sit at the back, bump that unit up to unit six and then turn two comes along, you bump that unit up to unit of six as well. And then generally what I do is I then send off this unit to go and do something during turn 2 or turn 3 and then the other unit at the back uh, I then bump that up to a unit of 9 and you see this army starts to swell and every turn you're generating 45 points worth of stuff the opponent's under pressure, he's got to get to you quick and you can start making mistakes maybe this one fulfills its mission uh, it's taken some casualties, it comes back then on the next turn um, I've I bump them up again and you just keep breeding these scarabs. Absolute nightmare for the opponents, uh, for the opponent in the game. Um, he's under pressure to kill the scarabs, uh, but if he comes near them with vehicles or whatever, he's going to get overwhelmed. Another tactic I've found uh, your opponent's got an independent character, and uh, you charge in a unit of fearless scarabs, and if they're big enough, no matter what brilliant weapon he has, say he takes out a base a turn, or two bases a turn. Uh, a unit of fearless scarabs can hold up an opponent um, and keep them pinned down. And then if you have these nearby, then each turn, say they lose three bases a turn in combat, then the uh, spiders can regenerate those and keep throwing spiders into the combat and you're locking down um, a unit. And I've done that in games, it's a new tactic that was developed and has worked very well indeed. So you can see a unit combination here uh, that works very well and saves points. I just buy a bare minimal, two units of three, 45 points each, and then I build up the force uh, during the game um, for free. It doesn't cost me anything. So, good unit combination there. Right, so that leaves two heavy support slots left open. And uh, so for this force, 
and controversially, a lot of people said, why do you take them? Gone for Necron monoliths. And not just not just one Necron monolith, but actually two. Not a popular choice anymore for Necrons. Uh, reasons behind it. Tactically, yes, I do take them and they work. I'll explain how. Uh, but also visually. Um, I've played Necron forces, I've, I've put armies together, and without the monoliths, they look lost. When you have monoliths in your force, um, very, very iconic Necron unit, um, and to take two of them, uh, it suddenly makes an army look, it goes from flat to looking really, really good. Because um, I don't have any other monstrous creatures or anything that towers above other things in the battlefield. But when I take monoliths, um, you just feel bigger, your army feels bigger and more intimidating. Um, and they do perform a function in the game. Uh, so in Necron monoliths, tactically speaking, the way I use them is they're able to deep strike. So they're able to appear at any point on the table. So there's nowhere in the table uh, that the opponent can hide. There's no quiet zone. Uh, if there's anywhere you need uh, a presence, then you just drop your monolith in. So that's one of the reasons. I use it as a medium range. I drop it sort of in the middle of the battlefield, especially when I can drop two of them. So I suddenly plant them down. Um, and then commence firing. Um, a big function for them in the force is a distraction. Uh, they're able to distract the enemy force. He's got to try and destroy this uh, unit here. It's uh, armor 14 all the way around, so it's nice to drop in the middle of the terrain. With armor 14, it's quite tough in close combat compared to other vehicles, and for shooting, the opponent's going to struggle to to take him out and it's four hull points as well so tough the weapon it carries is good uh, it's just the same as a as a 24 inch range battle cannon uh, strength fate AP3 so its weapon is a particle whip it is ordnance so it's pretty good at breaking into sort of medium armoured vehicles pretty good um, and then the AP3 large blast is good against infantry as well so happily take on space marines um, it's a good weapon on top these weapons are alright as well, you just fire them off in different directions, not brilliantly effective, but just an added bonus. And then the option here, uh, the, the two abilities that it has, it's fun to use for sure. So Eternity Gate here, two functions, it's enjoyable to use in games. First one, Dimensional Corridor, at the start of your movement phase, you can take a unit from reserve or you can take it from anywhere on the table as long as it's unengaged and you can beam it across and it will deploy from out the front. So it's kind of an ambush, you can move up to something, sit there, and then your opponent's got some infantry or something or a vehicle that's moved up, and then suddenly you can beam another unit over and it can appear out of the gate. So it's handy to have that, I like having that option in the game. I've used it before um, and it's worked well. So that's one of the, another reason why I take the monolith. And also, also Portal of Exile, uh, it's treated as a shooting attack, all enemy models are within D6 inches, so up to 6 inches when you roll. Uh, they must immediately pass a strength test uh, or be removed as casualties or no saves allowed. So you've got, you've got a combat that's going to take place here. You've got a unit that's moved around to take them on. There's unit of terminators there. Um, you swing the vehicle in, you fire your gate, and you suck a few of them in. And it's hilarious when it happens and it can have an impact on the game as well and I've done that before and it's worked well. So monoliths, they work for me, I know they're not for everyone, um, but they're an important part of the force. So monoliths are in uh, multiple reasons and just the visual side of it, um, you'll see that as we zoom out and look at the whole force together. But that's the Necron force, calculated it together, um, I just do these kind of little sheets here that I calculate force out, lay it out and then do a template of how it'll look in games. So you've got the Overlord there uh, on the barge with the War Scythe, 180 points. You've got the Overlord with Phaeron, War Scythe, uh, Phylactery, Semper Internal Weave, Resurrection Orb and uh, Phase Shifter and that's 225 points. And you've got the troops in the Ghost Ark, uh, 117 points for 9 war uh, Necron Warriors. Ghost Ark's 115. Knight Scythe, two of them, is 200 points. Uh, and then uh, I cal the way I calculated out this force here, it's two units of five Necron Warriors, and then later on I had the spare points for two more. It's two units of six Necron Warriors, and then uh, the Wraiths, six of them at 35 points, 210. Two units of Scarabs at 45 points, 
and then two more left, 200 points each. And the spiders, not great, three of them is 150 points. And you add it all up, including the extra two warriors, is 1,843 points. So seven points spare, which I couldn't find any points to spend. So that's the force. I'm gonna have a look at it now. Right, so there's the force for the Necrons. You can see the whole thing there laid out. So, as I said, uh, quite a large army. Um, didn't spend too many points on, on upgrades for units um, and chose units that are quite large. It, it's worked quite well. The force is nicely balanced. It's quite a presence to it. You can see there the monoliths um, just adds. I mean, imagine if I took those away. Imagine if I took those away and replace them with infantry units, you've suddenly got a, a, a flatter looking force. But when you add your monoliths, um, visually speaking, as far as intimidation goes, um, then that, and it's iconic, it's very, very Necron looking, uh, one of the famous Necron units. So those are in, uh, and then you've got your, so these are medium, I drop those down, and they're for harassment. If I lose those in the game, I'm not actually too worried. They're just, their function is just to distract the opponent. And it does work. I arm a 14 vehicle, throwing out those large amount of shots. The opponent feels he has to deal with them. Psychologically, they're so big. Um, and they, it diverts heavy weaponry fire after them. And it lets the rest of my force, which is actually the force, I think, that wins the games. These aren't for winning games. They're just for distraction and for harassment. Uh, you've then got... So they're medium. They sort of drop around the medium area of the battlefield. As long as I keep them back, depends what opponent I'm playing against. Excellent for deep striking and flexibility. It means I can beam units out all over the place as well. So just a supporting unit as well. Uh, and then these guys, these are my close combat, able to take on anything, fast moving. Uh, as long as I bring them on from reserve in a game so the opponent doesn't know where they're going to appear. Um, you can deep strike them as well. Another option, so another op unit that has flexibility to it. Great in close combat. Uh, absolute essential part of the force. Um, so those are there, there for uh, attacking the opponent. Uh, you can use them to defend objectives if the opponent's moving in. Uh, I usually use them in an attacking way uh, to go after enemy units, tie them down, destroy them. And then again, another fast part of the Force Chariot here uh, with the Necron Overlord and War Sire. So use that to fly around, take on infantry, heavy infantry, and good for taking on vehicles as well. And then uh, Troops Choice, a good one. Uh, nine warriors, protected in the transport, able to regenerate warriors, and then an extremely tough HQ choice. Necron Overlord with a whole load of upgrades, able to protect them and sit on an objective. Um, been very effective. So that's a defensive unit. Um, and if I ever do advance it, then it's a slow and cautious advance, and then a tough uh, HQ there. And then in combination with that, again, a def usually a defensive unit, uh, the Necron. Uh, spiders and they hold at the back, they hide and at the first part of the game they're just there for breeding units of scarabs uh, and I build up their strength in the early turns of the game and then these go out on missions to take out vehicles that are moving in um, and the longer they sit at the back then the more they breed and then towards the end of the game if there's an opponent near your objective whatever then I can send them in and they're monstrous creatures they do quite well. And then finally uh, the air support, generally you get air superiority with this force, two Necron uh, night sives carrying troops so that when the coast is clear the work's been done I can drop these off and they can snatch objectives um, either in your own half, your own objectives or you can go after opponents ones uh, and then the excellent firepower from these helps neutralize enemy air power and also ground targets as well, so just a supporting role that these have providing cover for the rest of the force. Uh, so you can see it there again, this force has kind of got units in it that are defensive and attacking. There's a lot of options here. Um, but there's your kind of defensive force. Um, and then your ass assault units here. And then a lot of supporting units that are able to enhance that attack and enhance the defense as well. So there's the Necron army. Um, very happy with it. Didn't take too long to put together. The same color scheme throughout. Um, once you learn that technique for painting them, uh, then your progress can really uh, be quite fast. So check out the painting tutorial if you like the look of these, and you can follow step by step how to paint the Necrons in this style. And then there's quite a few battle reports already up with the Necrons, um, and this force in particular. So check them out to see how well they play. And then you'll see the philosophy that I talk about here being actually applied 
in games and you can judge for yourself as to how effective it is but there's the Necron Force uh, one of the high performing armies that we have on the channel so uh, thanks for watching this video and tune in next time